Welcome and thank you for joining me in this lesson. Today we'll talk about double angle formulas. And just for the joy of math and because it's so much fun too, we are going to go over the proofs. First, we are going to look into sine of double angle theta. Sine 2 theta can, get, can be expressed as sine of theta plus theta. And if you remember your compound angle formulas for sine of the sum of two angles, so sine A plus B, which equals sine A cos B plus cos A sine B, then proving sine of 2 theta is very easy. So we have sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta. As you can see, these two are like terms. So we'll say that we have two sine theta cos theta. Sine two theta, everyone. And we'll box it up because that's how we celebrate every proof we go through. I'm just kidding. So moving on to the next formula. Our cos two theta will have three different formulas. Nothing to be scared of. If you remember one of them, then you can remember the rest. Similar to how we prove sine two theta, we'll write cos two theta as cos of theta plus theta. Recall again that the formula for compound angles cosine is cos A plus B equals cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. So in our case, we'll say that cos theta plus theta would be cos theta cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta. As you can see, cos theta, cos theta is two terms, exact same terms multiplying itself. So that makes cosine square theta. And sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta. Cos two theta, everyone. Let's box it up. Now we're going to move on to the next formula for cos 2 theta. And here is a little secret about it. Now all the formulas for cos 2 theta will come from this basic formula that we just proved. So I will rewrite the same formula we just proved. So that's cos squared theta minus sine square theta. If you remember, one of the first three formulas that we have learned is what we call the Pythagorean identity. It states that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So as a result, we're going to say that we can express sine squared theta as 1 minus cos squared theta, or we can say that cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. The presence of terms to the power of 2, which are typical in the Pythagorean identity, bring more variety in the formulas for cosine double theta. So as you probably have imagined already, if you replace cos squared theta by 1 minus sine squared theta, then we still have minus sine squared theta, then cos 2 theta will simplify to become 1. Remember these two are like terms, they're both negative, so 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Another formula for cos 2 theta.
let's try one more now the last one again we do something similar as we just did with cos 2 theta equals 1 minus 2 sine squared theta so we'll start off with cos 2 theta equals cos squared minus sine squared this time instead of replacing cosine squared as we did in the previous formula we are replacing sine squared theta by 1 minus cos squared theta so cos squared theta is what we already have minus 1 minus cosine squared theta we have to remember to keep this expression in brackets because we are subtracting a binomial so and subtraction will alter the signs of the terms so this would equal cos squared theta minus 1 plus cos squared theta as you can see here we have two like terms cos squared theta both positive which will add to 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 so there goes the last formula for cosine 2 theta. Let's make this rectangle perfect. <laughs> Here we go. So let's take a look at all our formulas. So we have three formulas for cos double theta. One that involves sine squared and cos squared. One that involves only sine squared and another one that involves just cosine squared. Now, why do we have to have, I mean, to use these three formulas? Are there advantages or disadvantages to using one or the other? It's good to have all three of them, but in many cases, when we are limited in the information given in a certain problem, it would be more beneficial to use the formulas where we have to use only one piece of information. For example, if you have to find cos 2 theta using the first formula, you're going to need to know both cos and sine of theta. If you want to use the second formula, all you need is the sine of theta, so only one piece of information. And if you're using cos 2 theta equals 2 cos squared minus 1, you only need to have cosine theta, again, one piece of information. We need to choose our formulas wisely and we use I mean we choose our formulas based on the information we are given so if you are given just the sign this will be a quicker way for you to find cos 2 theta if you're given just cosine this formula will be a quicker way to find cos 2 theta now moving on to our last double angle formula for the primary ratios 10 theta very similar process to the one that we use for sine and cos 2 theta. We'll write it as tan of theta plus theta. And I will color code them because we're using tan more than once here. Recall the formula for compound angle tan is tan of A plus B equals tan A plus tan B divided by 1 minus 10a 10b so that means that we have let's make this a different color sorry that means that we have 10 theta plus 10 theta over 1 minus 10 theta, 10 theta. So let's simplify this. As you can see, the numerator has two like terms. They will add to 2 10 theta. And in the denominator, we have 10 theta multiplying itself which makes it 1 minus 10 squared theta. 10 to theta, everyone. Okay. 
So these are the three formulas for the primary trig ratios of double angles. In the next lesson, or in the next part of the lesson, we'll look into some examples. Thank you for watching.